My dear friends, my dear colleagues, hello to you all. Well, thank you for joining our live broadcast uh, on Friday night. My name is Dmitry Ruzanov. I am the head of validation department in Zbir. Uh, we are responsible for managing model risk across the cooperation. So today we have heard uh, very interesting ideas about uh, the development of fintech, about the development of AI. Let me draw the line under that and let me tell you about our perspective of AI safety trends in finance. Well, first of all, let's have a look at the current trends for AI applications in finance. We see that uh, the overall growth rate uh, for the number of uh, models used in large finan financial institutions uh, is 15 to 25 percent, which means that uh, the number would double uh, in, in a matter of a few years. Then. Second trend is that uh, this data is difficult to interpret. The third trend is that uh, all the models are trend online. Then number four, new users emerge. Number five is new regulatory requirements, and finally, the new, more advanced and sophisticated methods, like in Zbir. We are already using AutoML, GAN, reinforcement learning, hand in hand uh, with the traditional scoring models. We start using new classes of models, like, for example, transaction-based product individualizations, chatbots, virtual assistants, and uh, they have been extensively covered in several presentations today. Banks and uh, other financial institutions uh, use transaction analysis for optimizing their cross-selling ratio. ATM logs uh, are used uh, for optimizing the cash circulation or, for example, optimizing uh, the movement of banking vehicles, using biometrical technologies uh, for controlling access uh, to the brick and mortar banking offices analyzing behavioral patterns uh, for uh, credit scoring for SMEs, uh, detecting suspicious transactions based on behavioral information analysis, as well as predicting employee attrition. Like, for example, many financial institutions are now focused on a large employee churn, and uh, they have to be to get ready for that in advance. We also observed the growth in the number and complexity of decision-making models. Over the past two years, the number of models has doubled. And over the past six years, uh, the number of uh, models applied more than doubled, and uh, the percentage, uh, the share of black, bo black box models uh, now exceeds 50 percent. We now use unsupervised learning, uh, neural networks, deep learning technologies. So we are facing totally new challenges today. Previously, it wasn't national motorway 
Now uh, we, uh, we have taken a turn to a bumpy country road. The new learning methods and model classes, uh, which are now shown in this tech cloud, they are already used by financial institutions. So this is a matter of the present. And to ensure the AI safety, we have to develop an operational risk management system in the bank and new models present a totally new model risk. So previously previously the financial institution risked penalties uh, from the they risked penalties from the regulator. They risked uh, some loss of profit. With the new models they have to face uh, totally new risks, uh, like a threat to health and safety if it's about unmanned vehicles or AI in healthcare, loss of privacy or the deterioration of the customer experience. To effectively mitigate those risks, uh, we need to develop a totally new approach uh, to model risk management. This, in spare, we have developed a six-pronged approach uh, where first we identify the model risk because in large corporations it's not clear right away where the model risk emerged, emerges. Uh, when we have data science and AI uh, in the and practically all the business processes, uh, we have to uh, complete the stock taking exercise for all those models. Number two, we have to validate. We have to validate uh, all those model classes in terms of statistics, in terms of machine learning application, in terms of their impact on specific business process. Then we continue down uh, this cycle and continue with the model risk assessment. I don't think that uh, the senior management is interested in the color-coded dashboard. Instead, uh, they are interested in how much money it would cost the bank if this or that risk materializes. The other three components of this cycle are related uh, to mitigating the risk. First of all, how can we limit, how can we mitigate uh, this model risk? Then how can we respond and how can we monitor this risk? And finally, how can we formulate, how can we formulate uh, our risk appetite as well as all the associated key metrics the way we do with other types of risks uh, like uh, credit risks or FX risks. Now let us talk about the sources, uh, about the sources of the model risk. Uh, there are four main sources for that, that's data, prerequisites, algorithms, and execution. Many people think that uh, algorithms uh, are the main source of model risks or deficiency in algorithms, but uh, in many cases uh, the risk emerges uh, from data. For example, if the data uh, for the model was prepared uh, with mistakes, uh, then it would not give the desired result, not at all. Then if a model is uh, any model, especially those models that are used in complex business processes, uh, those models are based on certain assumptions. And, uh, 
Like with any assumption, uh, they're based on expert judgments, and uh, the expert judgments uh, may not really reflect the true reality, true state of things, which is why they need to be stress tested and validated on a regular basis. Speaking about the algorithms, uh, the algorithms may be suboptimal. They may have a high degree of uncertainty associated with them, low accuracy or low stability. And execution, execution of the model, because even the best model based on the most reliable data and on the most correct assumptions may be poorly executed. And if it's poorly executed, this may affect the financial impact of that model. With the new models so emerging all the time, we need to develop uh, new validation procedures. One of such stress testing is one of such procedures since Non-interpretable uh, models are becoming uh, widely popular. Uh, we have to simulate the future performance of the model based on macro forecasts or some core assumptions. So this way uh, we will be able to do the scenario planning, uh, like for example, what if uh, the market situation changes tomorrow, what would happen then? Then we perform very specific validation tests for black box models. But uh, even though that uh, they're black box models, so uh, we uh, need to understand why the model gives uh, this or that prediction. And for that, we use the global or local interpretation methods, which give us uh, a very good approximation to why the model uh, has made uh, this or that decision. And alternative modeling. Alternative modeling is one of the best approaches uh, to one of the best ways uh, to learn uh, whether this model fully addresses uh, your business objectives. So if we can improve the model from 75G to 85G, then you must do it. To develop, to develop those alternative models, uh, we need to stress all the core assumptions uh, that the model is based on. And it's like an internal keg, in a way. You can modify the loss function, for example, differently, or select a different set of parameters. In many cases, uh, uh, just simplifying the model and uh, changing the set of parameters may drive, may drive this uh, financial result up. Just because uh, we have removed uh, a few mistakes in the model. The next challenge for the industry, the, the challenge uh, we have to deal with is the online training for models. So besides developing the model as such, uh, we need to develop uh, an algorithm which would help us to automatically validate those models. This way we can automate uh, the quantitative analysis. In Sber, we use SberDS platform for accelerated development and validation. 
an automatic model monitoring. This is used uh, for those models which have already been sent into the production. And here we perform a regular monitoring of data in the model. So basically we try and automate the model validation. And, uh, we end up uh, with having a very good performance dashboard uh, which shows us a real-time value for the model risks uh, so that we can control them and mitigate effectively. All the risks are there and uh, we have to be aware of them because uh, the new models new models bring new risks uh, and they can't be dealt with using obsolete methods uh, and uh, since the whole industry is moving to the AI based future which is becoming mainstream uh, we need to develop a comprehensive approach for mitigating the model risk. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Dmitry. We have a few questions uh, from our speakers. Uh, do we have to automate uh, the model validation? That's uh, question number number one. And question number two, what if, uh, well, we are already seeing numerous uh, incidents with data in large corporations. Will the corporations be able to cope uh, with the constantly growing amount of data? Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Uh, well, I think that uh, we need to continue developing to continue developing this automatic monitoring and the automatic validation system. As to the question whether we can really automate, fully automate uh, the validation and monitoring, well, it depends on the process. Some processes are based around uh, clear algorithm. And I would say that uh, in such cases, uh, yes, you can and uh, you'd better do that. But when it's a new model or a new business process, well, you have to be very careful whether the core assumptions do match the reality. Because any model is uh, a sort of approximation to reality, and uh, you have to account for that as well. But if we have already done this analysis, uh, we would be able to fully automate that. Otherwise, uh, I would go for partial automation of monitoring and validation, and uh, the remaining part uh, would not be automated. But still, still, this would give us uh, uh, this would give us uh, a huge cost advantage. As to the second part of the question, whether the financial institutions will be able to build an effective model of risk management system, well, I want to be optimistic. I think that, yes, they will be able to do that, but for that they need to start investing into developing such model risk management systems today. And I know banks are in a much better position than other organizations because banks are already used uh, to managing risks. They have this culture, they have this practice uh, like counterparty risk, know your customer and uh, other risks uh, so they could leverage on this experience and practice. but. Again, uh, the more complicated those models become, the more important it is to introduce the proper governance system, because you would have to manage thousands of models at the same time. 